Hi, welcome to Mad English TV. Look at these two sentences. Which one is right? Well, they're both right. It depends what you mean. Okay, do you want to eat with your grandma? Or do you want to eat your grandma? <laughs> okay, so let's look at these sentences. This one means you want to eat your grandma. This one means you want to eat with your grandma. Okay, in this one, you're talking to your grandma. Hey, let's eat grandma. Okay, in this one, you're talking to your brother. Hey, let's eat grandma. Okay, now we have a comma here. Why? Why do we have this comma? The reason we have it is because when we say these two sentences, there's a difference. Okay, listen to me. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. Can you hear it? There's a small pause after the word eat. Okay, so when we're talking, this is never going to be confusing because you can hear the pause, right? When we're speaking, we can hear each other. But when we're writing, we can't hear anything. So we need some symbol here to represent the pause. Okay, that's why we have English punctuation. Punctuation is so important because punctuation adds clarity to the meaning. If a sentence isn't clear, then we say it's ambiguous. It could have this meaning or it could have this meaning. But if you have punctuation correctly in the sentence, then it, it makes it really clear. So then the, the sentence has a lot of clarity. If it doesn't have clarity, it's ambiguous. And ambiguity is really bad in writing and in speaking. Okay, so let's look at another example here. Mary said, I'm fat. Mary said, I'm fat. <laughs> okay, so these both have very different meanings. Here, Mary is saying that I'm fat. Here, Mary is saying that she herself is fat. Okay, can you see the difference? So punctuation is really important. It changes the meaning of a sentence. Okay, so in this series on English writing, I'm going to teach you all about punctuation. I'm going to teach you all the punctuation marks. Okay, but I want to tell you a little secret. And the secret is that native English speakers suck at punctuation. Okay, so if your punctuation isn't very good, don't worry about it. In this series, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know. Okay, so let's take a look at all the punctuation marks that we use in English. Okay, this is called a question mark. This is called an exclamation mark. And that's called a period. And here we have quotation marks. This is called an apostrophe. That's called an underscore. And these are called brackets and parentheses. And there's a comma and a colon, semicolon. And this is called the at symbol. Okay, this is called a number sign. This is called an ampersand. Now, I have to be honest with you. I didn't know what this was called. So I looked it up before this lesson. I think most people would just call that symbol the and symbol. Okay, so this is called an asterisk. And this is the forward slash, the backslash. And this is called a dash or a hyphen. Okay, here we have an ellipsis and a tilde and a grave accent. Now, I have no idea why these last two are on our English keyboards because I've never used them before. But look, see in the top left corner there, you see the very corner key, it has the tilde and the grave accent. I have no idea why that's there. Okay, another symbol I've never used before is this one here over the six. Not sure why we use that. Maybe it's a math symbol. Okay, another one is this symbol over here, over the backslash. I have no idea what that's called. Um, and these brackets are called braces or curly brackets. 
Anyway, I'm getting carried away. Here are all our uh, English punctuation symbols, but I want to know what is the most confusing punctuation mark for you. Hopefully at the end of this series, none of them will be confusing, but right now, which one is the most confusing? Let me know in the comments right down there, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.